Greetings dear friends, I present your attention the most common raw functions and breakdowns that occur on the Beam V7 series E65. As you understand, the electrical system of the car is extremely complex. There are multiplex data buses with many controllers and control units, literally one controller in each door and seat. All this can either simply fail completely or it can be a little stupid and it is not known what is easier to cope with. The electric version itself is made of sufficient quality, but the wiring of the motor panel, the starter power bus and its contacts and the generator which is loaded here to the maximum and therefore often fail remain vulnerable spots. Fortunately, the generator itself is a fairly simple, air-cooled. Experiments with battery and a thing are a thing of the past, but it's still extremely expensive. Most testing problems are related to multiple block failures and these failures are usually software failures. Don't think that this means that problems are solved cheaply, not at all. Special equipment and a silked and a skilled head are required, and the cost of fixing of the and the cost of fixing the next problem can be tens of thousands of rubles. The least problems are on restyled cars with MSK or with the simplest version of the triple C, and the most advanced systems inevitably require more attention. Another amusing malfunction is the frequent failure of the steering column adjustments. They are electrical here, and when the comfortable entrance option is activated, they may be refused during the warranty period. In general, it is better to turn it off in the belly allows it. There are almost no problems with the body. It is well painted and the amount of aluminum in it is also not prohibitive. The quality of the interior elements is very high, although light skin is prone to rubbing already in the third or fourth years near the driver's workplace. On official cars, the state of the driver's seat is often deplorable if the salon is not occupied. Sometimes traces of the work of would-be electricians, poorly installed carpets and door cards, damaged plugs and broken fasteners are visible. The oldest cars can show signs of corrosion on the rear axis and in the places where the plastic parts of the underbody are attached. Plastic, by the way, is easily lost and is expensive. You should pay close attention to the presence of original elements of the underbody kit and sills. This is not only an aesthetic element, they are also responsible for sound insulation. So that the loss of an inconspicuous plate will cause a change in the sound background in the cabin. Suspensions are completely traditional for BMW. McPherson strut at the front and multi-link at the rear. The design is generally unpretentious, but there are nuances. The strut are quite expensive, but the price of struts with EDC are especially impressive. It is about 40-70,000 rubles for a shock absorber, which is comparable to the price of numerous cylinders from competitors. Fortunately, the low cost of conventional racks and every source of the controlled ones make the problem less acute. The cost of the levers and their mileage are absolutely standard for BMW. From 30 to 70,000 km without serious intervention is a typical option. On cars with V8, smaller, on cars with 6s, more. On versions with dynamic drive, the cost of an active anti-roll bar can cause an unpleasant grimace on the face of real BMW water. About 80 100,000 rubles, and there are no analogs. But Drew and Arthur know what they pay for. The rear suspension also doesn't have any particular problems with the resource. An expensive option is perhaps pneumatics, which they try to avoid. It doesn't improve handling and comfort as much as it increases the cost of servicing cars over 6 years of age. The cost of the cylinders is relatively low, at 23,000 troubles, but the pneumatic drives and control unit are also not eternal, and when they fault overlap, the cost of restoration and work will be rather big. The steering is usually equipped with a servotronic system. The steering rack in this case costs 100,000 troubles, but the problem is not the price, but the unpredictability of the resource. On many cars it starts knocking even when the mileage is less than 30,000 km and can knock up to a mileage of 300. But very often there is no luck and the rail starts to flow, which already requires replacing the unit. Moreover, the bulkhead on the knee is often impossible due to the design features. It is highly recommended to remember old-fashioned advice and not turn the steering wheel while standing still, especially if the car is equipped with very wide rubber. At the same time, the resource of steering rods and tips with careful handling will also grow from a relatively modest 300,000 to almost eternity. With proper operation, the safety margin is enough for the entire service life. The brakes for such a heavy car seem to be quite sufficient, but there are owners who have literally burned the brakes in pets because the dynamics of the car can be supercar. 445 horsepower and 6 seconds to hundreds. The result of the M3 in the back of the E36. And even on cars with V8, the discs behave regularly. The load on the braking system during dynamic movement is great, and we have battles too often. As for wheel bearings, they traditionally often suffer on heavy cars with V12, and if the wheels are shot with electrical tape, the resource from replacement to replacement can be 30-40,000 km, and nothing can be done about it. These are the side properties of low-profile tires. The only gearbox option here has a predictable but not too large resource. 
I mentioned the problems of the ZF 6HP26 6 step at the beginning. Early wear of the torque converter lockup linings as well as bushings, well body mechatronics payloads due to overheating and dirty oil evade all owners. But the boxes have long been mastered in repair, so this is not a problem but a cost. And not very small. If the bushings are still intact, which happens when changing the oil at least with a mileage of 40,000 km, then a simple repair of the gas turbine engine and cleaning the well body will cost about 30-40,000 troubles. If the bushings are already worn out, the shafts vibrate and hum, then most likely the cost of the repair will exceed 100,000 troubles and the chances that it will be successful are not too great. After the average hand of automatic transmission service, the box goes for another 2 or 3 years, and again for repairs. This is because the unit is quite complex and doesn't tolerate hollow-hearted solutions, dirt and slow bleedings. Ordering a contract by manufactured unit from ATSG or another larger repair shops now cost about 200,000, but on machines repaired a few years ago, such boxes can be found, and this is one of the preferred options. Of course, most of all the resource of automatic transmission on cars with gasoline in line 6 and least of all on with 12. Additional automatic transmission radiators help to extend the life of the box and with frequent oil changes can greatly reduce the chances of repeated overhaul. Such a collective farm is strongly recommended by many specialized services. By the way, it is worth paying attention to the plastic pallet of the automatic transmission. It is subject to deformation due to the high temperature of the oil and starts to flow. And an oil leak, as you know, kills the box with a guarantee. Seasoned owners of cars with ZF6HP recommend changing the sum gaskets with every oil change and carefully monitor the oil droplets under the car. Usually this section comes first, but in this case it is too trivial. Almost all motors have already been reviewed and more than once. Inline 6 of the M series, both petrol and diesel, are some of the most successful BMW engines from the relatively new ones. Gasoline M54 were installed until 2005 and M57 diesels until the very end of production. On restart cars, the M52 series motors were replaced with N52, which can be considered a disadvantage. Firstly, they are much more prone to piston croaking and a number of other problems would greatly limit the resource. Secondly, the maximum power of the 3-liter engine slightly exceeded the tax 250 horsepower, although the torque remained the same. Gasoline V8s of the N62 series were installed from the beginning of production of the car until the very end, and there are almost no chances of its completely problem-free existence. It is very prone to coking at standard service intervals of 15,000 km and branded oil, but in general its design is reliable and allows, under certain conditions, to obtain a very good resource. Unfortunately, among BMW owners, there are rarely people who are inclined to really improve something. Most of the owners calmly kill the engine to the point where restoration is impossible. First, the valve seal is set down, then the rings are coated, and finally, the coating of the cylinders and valve seats with guides are damaged. If suddenly you have such a car and you are reading this, then remember, this motor needs oil, better ester oil, definitely not coking oil, and also a small interval of the replacement, no more than 10,000 km on average. He needs a colder thermostat with the opening temperature of about 85-90 degrees. And do not forget about the timely replacement of guides and timing chains. There are two of them, one of each cylinder head, and they are very thin, like bicycle ones. Replacement of gaskets cleaning the crankcase ventilation and checking the condition of the control system sensors. What happens if these recommendations are ignored is usually seen by every resident of a large city. A well-worn 7 smoking blue smoke from two chimneys is quite a common sight. With the V12 of the N73 series, it is absolutely stupid to count on some kind of economy in operation, but with the car it really doesn't feel its weight. And the resource as a whole, despite all the environmental troubles present, is noticeably more than that of other N motors. Weaknesses are essentially the same as in the N53 on the E60s 5s. All processes are the same, only with a slight higher mileage. The full range of technologies needed includes doubles, venos, electronic and direct injection. The complexity of the design is growing not only due to the increase in the number of cylinders, but also due to the use of throttle-free intake and direct injection. The diesel M57 is a completely different matter. They are traditionally considered the most successful engines on several series of variants for traction and reliability. Of course, they are expensive and fragile piezo injectors, they have a limited operating life, and besides, they are very afraid of overheating. But here they have sparring working conditions, the main thing is not to pour low-quality fuel and not to drain the tank. The high-pressure fuel pump is also afraid only of bad diesel fuel, and even that it will be able to digest several times without consequences, the EGRL is a consumable, it should be repaired or replaced at the first time of malfunction. The crankcase ventilation system is still not very successful, and the motor's electro-hydraulic mountings do not like contamination of the engine compartment with oil, and are not cheap. 
Complaints about the low resource of the mass airflow sensors are also quite common, but again they do not lead to a complete failure in operation, and the problem is relatively inexpensive. The turbine is capable of going all to 100,000 km if you do not forget to change the oil in time and do not overheat the engine. And still do not cheap tune it beyond measure, because the resource of the turbocharged is rapidly decreasing at capacities over 250. It seems that there are enough weak points, but in fact none of the malfunctions is fatal and doesn't entail serious interference with the engine. Except that the overflow nozzle can melt the piston and destroy the motor completely, but the motor control system is good enough to prevent this. The diesel V8 of the M67 series turned out to be the last in its family so far. The last reincarnation of the engine was installed on the E65 in an aluminum block and with a power of 330 horsepower. It has no obvious problems with reliability, except for quite standard diesel, fuel equipment and EGR. Machines with cracks in the cylinder head are relatively common, usually this is due to operation on high sulfur diesel fuel. The structure is light and the corrosion of the combustion chamber manifests itself. Unfortunately, there are a few reviews about the operation, but in general the opinion about this power unit is positive. The list of problems for the most part coincides with the problems of the M57. On this information about the problems of the BMW 7 series, E65 is exhausted. If you know more or disagree with what you heard, I am waiting for you in the comments.